Hello everybody. Hope you guys are doing very well. Again, it's a pleasure for me to welcome you to my lecture on board. So, uh, this is the continuation of our series of lectures on trigonometric substitution. And uh, if you haven't gone through any of my lectures, I would recommend please uh, go through once so that uh, the present lecture will be easier for you to understand. Okay. Okay. So, in this uh, lecture, I will try to explain you something slightly different, okay? Even though uh, this does not look like our earlier example, but uh, it has the same pattern hidden inside, yeah? So, we are looking at the following in growth. So, if you look at the expression under the square root, it is none of the three expressions uh, just listed but it uh, I mean as what we have did it earlier so it is just hiding it in uh, one more step uh, so uh, this expression let's write it separately here 5 minus 4x minus x square yeah so this expression this can be written down I mean in this way that uh, 5 minus 4x plus x squared. Yes. So, uh, what I uh, what I am trying to do, I am just trying to uncover this square uh, there here. Okay. So that it comes to our in a in our known pattern. Yeah. So the idea is to have some constant inside this expression. Yes. We need to have some we, we need to add some constant inside this expression so that this expression uh, transform into a complete square okay this is the idea so how to make this expression as a complete square 4x plus x square now if i add a 4 here then see this uh, this expression transforming into uh, this expression this whole thing is transforming into a complete square because we know x plus 2 whole square this equals x square plus 4x plus 4 yeah so if i am adding plus 4 inside this uh, bracket so i am getting a complete square but 4 was not there in the picture yeah we also need to maintain the order yes so 4 was not inside this uh, so since i have add this 4 Therefore, I also have to subtract it. Yeah. Okay. Now, 5 minus 4x plus x square plus 4. Now, I am pulling minus 4 outside of this expression. So, minus, minus, plus. Here is a minus. There is another minus. So minus, minus, plus. So, it will be plus. Okay. So, we have 5 minus this equals x plus 2 whole square plus 4 and what we know 5 plus 4 this equals 9 so this becomes 9 minus of x plus 2 whole square yeah so now let's write it like this uh, this equals x by 9 minus x plus 2 whole square dx yeah and now he, now uh, now we can work with it after uh, after a few more step so we'll make a change of variable first here so uh, what i am going to do i am going to take uh, let's use some different thing i am going to take u equals x plus 2 yeah okay so now see this is the first um, the, this the, 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 this is the first substitution we are doing here right now if u equal to x plus 2 then uh, what about the uh, then what is x this implies x equals u minus 2 yeah and this implies this implies our differential of x what would be the differential this equals d of u minus 2 this is du because you know differentiation of constant is 0 so it is du on the other hand 
we are now going to substitute all this over here yeah so let's do this so if you are substituting what do you obtain i equals what was our our x is u minus 2 so we have u minus 2 9 u square and dx dx is du yeah dx equals du so this is du okay so now this whole expression transform into a function of u but see we cannot do anything from here so what i am what i was after now i we have to reduce it further to a pattern that is familiar to us and we can use and for that we have to use trigonometric substitution to solve this yeah so what we are going to do now we we will take u equals 3 sin phi okay now if u equals 3 sin phi then 9 minus u square equals 9 minus 3 sin phi 9 minus 9 sin square phi this equals 9 1 minus sin square phi and as we know this equals 9 cos square phi yeah therefore what will be the square root of this if you are now taking the square root this equals 3 cos phi right now here you also have to restrict the domain I mean you have to re restrict uh, the interval of phi so that these things remain positive so what would be the uh, range of phi yes it will be from minus pi y2 to, to pi y2 yeah because only in this range phi is cos phi is positive okay so you have to mention this now let's now if you are substituting this what we obtain we obtain i equals what was our u u is 3 cos phi minus 2 3 cos phi minus 2 and here we have 3 cos phi now you also have to take care of the differential part now we have substitute u equals 3 sorry u equals 3 sin phi it will be sin phi this is sin phi so we have u equals 3 sin phi and du then this equals differentiation of sin phi is cos phi so, so this is 3 cos phi okay now so what i have we have this let's substitute this 3 cos phi d phi so i have uh, uh, so i have 3 sin phi minus 2 over 3 cosine phi multiplied by 3 cosine phi d phi now see we are very lucky here because this 3 cosine phi is getting cancelled yes now so the integral actually turns out to be pretty easy here what we have now what's what remains it is 3 sin phi minus 2 d phi and we have uh, 3 sin phi minus 2 d phi so uh, everybody can take this uh, way so let's continue uh, it is integral of 3 sin phi d phi minus 2 of d phi what do you obtain this is minus of 3 cos phi because integration of sin phi is cos phi minus cos phi and we have minus of 2 phi plus c so what do you obtain we have minus of 3 cosine phi minus 2 phi plus c yeah so it is almost done except what we have to do now did you remember from our last lectures 
we have to yes we have to go back to our original variable x and here see we also have two substitution yes so this was our second substitution and this was our uh, first substitution right so we have two substitution so we have to so first we have to go back first we have to go from phi uh, to u and then from u we have to return to our original variable x so how to do this how we are going to return to our original variable okay so we will follow the same strategy here too as what we have did in our last few lectures so we have to draw a triangle yeah so again just to see why we need a triangle this answer requires the knowledge of cosine of phi in terms of u first right so we have phi let's define this angle as phi and name this triangle as a b c now we have substitute u equals 3 sin phi so if you are taking this side as 3 then from the definition of sin phi ac equals u right so we have ac equals u and what is our bc bc in terms of u from pythagoras theorem this is 3 square minus u square that is 9 minus u square square root of 9 minus u square now we know bc is 3 cos cosine of phi bc is nothing but 3 of cosine of phi therefore we obtain 3 cosine of phi equals square root of 9 minus u square now what we are going to do here we will just substitute this value of cosine of phi and phi in terms of u before that i also need this angle phi in terms of u so we have phi uh, we have ac equals u yeah as what we have defined and uh, from the trigonometric uh, formula ac is nothing but 3 sin phi 3 sin phi equals u this gives sin of phi equals u over 3 this gives phi equals arc sin of u by 3 okay 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 so now what we are going to do we will substitute each of this value this one this one to here we will substitute all this value here so this is first part of conversion yeah so what do we know now we know sine phi in terms of u yeah if sine phi equals u over 3 then phi equals arc sine of u over 3 so let's now substitute this i equals we have minus of 3 cosine phi equals minus of square root minus 9 minus u square minus of 2 phi phi is arc sine u over 3 plus 3 and we obtain this so we have finished we have came from phi to u now we have to return to our original variable that is from u to x but that part is trivial yeah because we have we have our u what we have chosen u equals x plus 2 right so let's just substitute this here we have i then finally what we obtain 9 minus x plus 2 whole square minus 2 arc sine of x plus 2 by 3 plus c yeah okay so this was a more advanced example where we have a uh, quadratic form in the square root and we uncover a pattern that involves a number of plus a variable squared or minus variable squared okay 
so uh, can we always do this yeah we can always do this and we can always complete squares okay uh, i will make some more videos using this type of examples uh, and i also hope that today's lecture is clear to you please let me know if you have any queries till then see you bye